Hello, Internet. <laughs> Glad you're here with us today. Glad you're here to worship us with us in this virtual space. Um, it's a little bit different, and to be honest, I think all of us would prefer to be actually in worship together in the Lord's house. But the Lord is with us wherever we are. And whether we're sitting at a kitchen table or watching this on the couch or at work or who knows, in your car, uh, preferably not when you're driving. Uh, but who knows where you're watching us? Who knows where you're worshiping with us? And we pray that today's worship is a blessing for you. So let us begin with an invocational prayer. Heavenly Father, it is a trying time. There's lots of uncertainty. There's lots of fear. But Lord, that's why we give thanks that we are connected to you. Your son is the true vine. Through him, we are connected to you and we're also connected to one another. And that is something that quarantine and and distancing and all the other things cannot break. It is something that brings us together in, in a wonderful harmony with you. We ask, Lord, that you would open our hearts to that truth today in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord's people have experienced all sorts of trials and tribulations throughout the years. And no matter where they are, what continent they are, what has always brought them together is their faith. And today, even though we are in the midst of, you know, all this corona talk and what's going on and how we're having to protect ourselves and others, it's good for us to remember that in the midst of it, we have a God who is the creator of all things, who has redeemed us, but is still with us even now. And so one of the ways the church has reminded themselves of that wonderful truth is that they've said together the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's a creed that they've had for over 1,800 years. And so let us say that wonderful creed together and proclaim it with the rest of the church. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our reading for today comes to us from John 15. It starts at the first verse. Many of you, even if you don't know John 15, would know the, the you know, I am statements of Jesus that we've been talking about in our sermon series. And this one is the I am the true vine. And so if you want to follow along, like I said, we're going to be reading together John 15, 1 through 8. And I'm going to be using the NIV version. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself, but it must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, though, you can do nothing. You do not remain in me. You are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Today's text, uh, we're going to be going through John 15, and we're going to specifically be narrowing in on verse 5. And that's what we're going to be looking at, which is, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. There was a pastor in Grand Rapids, Michigan, who uh, once told his congregation to look to the person next to you. And, and it was something they did regularly, so they, they were pretty prepared for it. They weren't, this was a surprise. So they looked to each other, and they were waiting for him to say something like, say to the person, God loves you, or 
they asked them a question about themselves so you can get to know each other better. They were prepared for that. What they were not prepared for was when he said, take a look at the tag at the back of that person's shirt. And to be honest, everybody froze. Everybody's like, I am not doing that. And he kept on encouraging them. He said, please do it. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to ask you guys, whoever, wherever you're at, if you're with somebody else, do the same. Uh, pause it if you need to and take a look. Or if you're with family, you just look around or even you know, have some clothing nearby. I want you to look specifically, though, at that tag. And I want you to look for where it's made. And that's what he did with his congregation. And he asked them where, you know, what's, you know, what's the, the, the place where it was made? He asked them to shout it off. One person from over there said it was from uh, China. Somebody else said from Thailand. Somebody said from Mexico. Somebody said from Canada. Somebody said from the United States. And then a few people had the really nice stuff and it said from France or some, you know, unique destination like that. And after they got done, he said, look how connected we are. He said, look how amazing it is that somebody, you know, there was one person that made, they got the, the materials, like the cotton or the silk, and then another person wove that into cloth, and another person made it into a shirt, and then another person brought it to you. Another person sold it to you. He said, it's amazing how interconnected we are. Imagine all those hands that have come together and are now connected to you just to get you a shirt, let alone your socks and your pants and your shoes and all the other stuff. And, and that's what we're talking about today, is that interconnectedness that we have. And that's what our text is really getting at today, is connection. As I read, Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. The whole point of this is talking about us being connected. In the, in the first place it points to us being connected, is being connected to God. Because God created us to be connected. Um, when he made us first and we were perfect and the whole world was perfect, the, our connection with God was also perfect. We had this wonderful connection between him and us of creator and creator. And we also had the create, uh, an even more intimate connection with him of heavenly father and child. God created us to have connection with him, to be known by him and to know him. And what's cool is he's also created us to be in the same way with each other. We're not created to be islands. We're not to, created to be just looking out for numero uno. I mean, if you think about just the beginning of the Bible, that shows us that. God creates man, gets him to work, yeah, he's put him to work, he's doing things in the garden, and he says, it is not good for man to be alone. So he creates woman and brings them together. And then he tells them, be fruitful and multiply. So one of the first things God does after he creates the earth is he creates that wonderful blessing of marriage to bring people together, to connect them. And he brings them together as family as well and says, produce more families. Go out, do these things. Be connected to each other. But we brought sin into the world, and it damaged and destroyed our connection. I mean, the first connection it destroyed was our wonderful connection between uh, like us and a giving and loving Lord. Because our sin brought in selfishness, greed, envy, hate, jealousy, immorality. And almost all of our sins are basically us taking God's gifts of ways of connecting us to each other. And instead of using them to connect to other people, using them just to fulfill our own desires, our own pleasures, and our own wills. Our sin destroyed our connection and cut us off from a holy and perfect God. The original plan was for us to live in eternity connected with him. And now because of our sin, the only outcome is that was condemnation, being eternally cut off from the God we were supposed to be connected to. And What's sad also is that, yes, that, that, that vertical connection between us and God was broken and destroyed and messed up, and the connection was broken, but it also breaks the connection between us and our fellow people, those around us. When the Bible talks about that first sin, it's talking about Adam and Eve, the next sin it basically talks about is Cain and Abel. Two brothers 
We're supposed to be family, supposed to have this love and care for each other, watching each out for each other, having each other's back. And Cain basically turns his back on that. He gets jealous of his brother Abel, and eventually, because of that jealousy, kills him. And that same jealousy and that same uh, sin crops into our relationships and connections as well. Think about it. Marriages are supposed to be about giving. But so often sin turns them into just something to get from the other person. Families are supposed to be there to support each other, but so often they become broken and fractured and shells of what they're supposed to be. Look around you. You'll see a lot of people in the news and on your phones and on your media talking about being connected. But you see very little of it because of the sin in this world. But even though we broke that connection with God, God didn't give up on us. And that's the important thing for us here is that yes, there is that sadness that sin brings into this world, that brokenness of the connections, but God didn't rest and just leave it at that. From that very beginning, he said, I'm going to send a Savior. He told that to Adam and Eve from the very beginning. He said, I'm going to send a Savior to fix this broken connection that we have. A Savior that would restore it all. And that's what Jesus did. He takes our sin, all of the things we've done to break and shred our relationships with God and others, and he takes all that sin and he puts it on his back and he takes up a, it up a hill outside of Jerusalem. And when he is nailed to the cross, that sin is nailed with him. It, he pays for it all. Every little bit of it, he pays for it. And because of that, our sin is wiped away. The thing that cut us off and broke the connection between us and God is taken away. And now what's really cool is that we have this wonderful relationship with God again. He is once again our Heavenly Father. He's once again the one that listens to our prayers and answers them. He's the one that knows our name, knows what's going on in our life, and cares about it. He's the one that is by our side no matter where we're at, no matter what is happening, no matter what is, whatever situation we are in. And also because of Christ, our eternal destiny that once was hell and condemnation has now been switched to a wonderful heaven and eternal connection with God. And that brings us back for our, to our text for today. In John 15, verse 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And this has a ton of implications for our lives, especially in the midst of the situation that we all kind of find ourselves in right now. Because first, the, the, that salvation and forgiveness that I just talked about in Christ is only found in Christ. And, and that's the key, is that there's so many people in the world saying you can find you know, salvation, forgiveness, or whatever it is that you're looking for in this door, in this door, in this place, in this place. But what this is saying is we only find that salvation when we are connected to the vine, connected to our Lord and Savior. But for those of us that believe and those of us that know the Lord, right now, that, that brings up some really tough questions. Because we say, normally I'd be, connected, I'd be connecting to the vine in worship, in church. But that's not where we are today. We're all sitting in different places, in front of TVs, in front of phones, in front of computers. We're not in church. It's our normal thing, so what do we do? Well, I think we need to pull a Barry Sanders. And if you don't know who Barry Sanders is, Barry Sanders was a running back for the Detroit Lions for a good many years, fantastic Hall of Fame running back. And he had a really amazing ability. He had power, so he could, if he wanted to, just bowl through large groups of people or you know, the defensive line or whatever he wanted to push through. But that's not normally the way he worked. What he normally did is he would hit some kind of resistance, whether it be a pile of defensive linemen or it be somebody trying to tackle him. And instead of trying to push through, what he'd do is he'd bounce and roll around. It's amazing the highlight reels of just watching him. He looks like he's made out of rubber. He hits the pile, just boom, and he bounces off and rolls around. 
And that's what we're doing today. The fact that you're sitting at home watching this or wherever you are watching this means you've pulled a Barry Sanders. You wanted to be in church, but because of the virus situation, we can't be. So what do we do? We bounce and we roll around and we worship together online, virtually. And there's other ways too. We're going to be doing a, a Bible study every Sunday at 10 o'clock. We're going to be doing a Bible study on a, on a web platform called Zoom. And it's going to be, we can have over 100 people, or up to 100 people on there in Bible study together, talking about God's Word together. It's going to be not the same as sitting in a room together, but it's going to be an amazing opportunity. And there's other opportunities too. Many people talk about, I wish I was in devotions more. Well, this is your chance. Think about it. We're, we're, a lot of the stuff we normally have in our lives has been canceled. We have this chance to, to be in the Word, and we're going to be sending out one daily to people, and, or regularly to people, and you can read that one, but you also can just get into the Word. It would be a great time just to start the book of Matthew and read through our Savior's sacrifice for us. And other people have said, well, how do I um, give my offering? And once again, we're going to just pull up Barry Sanders and bounce and roll around, because we can't hand it to each other or put it in the plate as we often do. So what do we do? You can mail it in. Mail it in as a check. Or you can go online, either on the Realm or on our website, and you can give digitally that way. It's a great way to still be faithful in your offering when you can't be in the church to physically put it in a plane. There's lots of ways that we can be connected to the vine. Even when we can't be in his house or in the Bible study that we're normally in. It's a wonderful blessing. But Jesus wasn't just talking about being connected to him. Let's look at verse 5 again. I am the vine, and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. He says that if we're connected to him, we're going to bear much fruit. And so he asked the question, okay, well, which fruit are we going to bear? Because there is a lot, Scripture talks a lot about different types of fruit that the Christians do. But I think there's two types today that fit specifically this idea of being connected to the vine. Because of our relationship with God has been restored, God has given us his Holy Spirit. And that causes us to want to restore the relationships around us that have been broken because ours has been repaired with God and now his Holy Spirit lives in us and we now want to repair the relationships with those around us. So what do we do? Well, the first way, the first fruit that relates to this is that we try to fix the connections that are broken. And there's lots of reasons why they're broken, but there's two kind of big ones. One is our own sin. And what we're called to do as Christians now with the Holy Spirit living in us is we take a good look inside. And we go and we say, you know what? I have sinned. I have done wrong. I was responsible, or at least partially responsible, for this broken connection with this other person. And as God's people, we're called to go to them and apologize and ask for forgiveness from them. And sometimes it's other people that broke this relationship and broke that connection. And so one of the fruits that we have is we forgive them, even those that don't deserve to be forgiven. Because God forgave us when we didn't deserve to be forgiven. And now we turn around, we take that forgiveness and we turn it and we reflect it back to those around us. The idea is that God is calling us to be his ambassadors of, of reconciliation. Whether it be asking for forgiveness to something that we have done to reestablish that connection. Or forgiving those that have done something to us to break that connection. And then finally, we have one more, one more kind of fruit that comes that's related to our connection. And that is that if I'm connected to Christ, and you're connected to Christ, we're connected together. And it is a connection that is more amazing than even being in the same place together. It is a connection that goes beyond quarantine and self-distancing it's a connection that brings us together in our Savior. And being connected to Christ and one another, and one another, we bear the fruit of watching out for our neighbor. Last week we started off with 
the idea of there's three ways we do that. We pray, we prepare, and we protect. We pray, prepare, and protect. And we can put that same idea, this idea of us being connected together in the vine. We pray for each other, and we pray for those around us. We lift them up to the Lord, asking the Lord to protect them, to watch over them, and to bless our connection with them. And then we prepare. Last week we talked about how we prepare in Scripture first, and then we prepare by getting the supplies and things we need with a level head. Not hoarding, but just getting what we need. But another thing we can add to that is we can go to those around us that are at risk. You know the, the, the groups, those are basically 65 and up, and those that have, uh, are, you know, have immune uh, issues that, that they can't you know, defend themselves against the virus very well. If you know who they are, go find them. And ask them if they have what they need. Do they have enough food? Do they have enough gas? Do they have enough whatever it is that they'll need if there's a quarantine or if this gets worse? And then finally, is that one to protect? And last week we talked about that idea of shaking hands and all these other things that would be our way of protecting those around us because we're not focused on ourselves. We're focused on staying healthy so that we can protect those that are around us so we don't get them sick. But we can protect in other ways. Last week it was a physical way. This way, it's, it's a protecting of the heart. In this time of isolation, we're not supposed to be touching each other, talking to each other, and staying away from each other. It can get very lonely. And so our job as Christians is to protect the hearts of those around us. Make some phone calls. Call your friends. And call people you barely know. And just ask, how are you doing? How are you holding up? I just called to say hi. And do that on a regular basis. You can write letters. If you're one of those people that loves to write letters, write letters to people around you and send them out to them. And if you're one of the kids sitting at home right now with mom and dad, you know what? You can draw some pictures. Draw pictures for those around you. And if you're like, I don't know who to send it to, call us at the office and we'll send you some addresses that you can send those letters and those, and those cards and those drawings to. Every card and drawing I get from a kid going out to church and hands it to me, it makes my day. And usually they all end up in a folder in my desk. Imagine if you were alone and separated and you wanted just anybody. And a drawing from one of the kids at church comes to you saying, I'm thinking about you and praying about you. Think of the difference that'll make. Think of how that helps us protect each other. So, this week, we've been talking about Christ being the one true vine whom we've connected to. We're connected to him because of what he has done for us in saving us. He's saved us, and now we are connected to the Father, and we are connected to each other. And we live that out by, one, being connected by the Savior in different ways, by like being in worship online, and all these different things we talked about. But we also live it out by praying, preparing, and protecting each other. May we all do so. Amen. Being God's people who are now connected to the vine, he calls us to, to talk to him, to bring our concerns and our fears and everything to him. And then because of that connection, we are saved. And he listens to us. And he hears and he answers our prayers. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have called us to bring all our concerns and thoughts to you, and that's what we do. Because right now, there's a lot to be concerned about. There's a lot of fear running around our, our world. And so, Lord, we ask that you would be with each and every one of us. That we would look to the connection we have with you through your Son. That we would look to that for our strength. That we would look to that for our foundation in these shaky times. And that, Lord, through him, we would bear fruit bear fruit of staying connected, but also staying connected to each other. That we would look out for each other. That we would look out for those in need and making sure that they have food and, and all their supplies. And that we would also look out spiritually for those around us and help protect them. We ask that we would call up people, write letters to people, draw pictures for people, and do whatever we can to check up on them and that in this time of isolation, that we make sure that they are still connected. Lord, in your mercy. Here on prayer. We also pray for all those that are sick with
whether it be with uh, just whatever disease they might have or have the coronavirus. We especially lift up those with the coronavirus now, Lord, and ask that you would heal them according to your will. We also pray that you be with those that are with them, those in hospital, with doctors and nurses and all our healthcare workers and clinics and everywhere. We ask that you would keep them safe. We pray that you be with those that are trying to find a, a cure to this virus and try, help them find that vaccine. And Lord, we pray that you be with our government, our president, our Congress, and our governor, and our local and state government as well. We ask that you would be with them as they try to manage this crisis as best they can. We ask that you would give them the wisdom that is needed in such a difficult time. And we ask your blessing upon all of them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask all these things in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. When Moses and Aaron were before the Lord, he gave Aaron a blessing to say over the people of Israel. Uh, blessing that they were it was said over them regularly as they wandered in the desert or as they were going into the promised land. It was a promise that was, and a blessing that was said over King David as well and over Solomon and all the kings of Israel. It was a blessing that even Jesus would have heard in the synagogue as he was growing up. And one that, who knows, he might have even said over the people as he led worship. That blessing is called the Aaronic blessing. That's the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. See you next week.